Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commanding Officer of Officer Training Command Newport, welcome to the graduation ceremony for Officer Candidate School, Class 17, TAC 23. Over the past 13 weeks, the class team has been responsible for developing today's graduates to serve as professional naval officers worthy of special trust and confidence. The Class 17, TAC 23 class team includes class officers, Lieutenant Caracosa and Lieutenant Condra, class recruit division commanders, Chief Petty Officer Galarza, and Master Chief Petty Officer Belfe, and class drill instructor, Staff Sergeant Madrigal. Guests are encouraged to take photographs from the seating area at any time during the ceremony, except during the playing of the national anthem. The order of events for today's ceremony are as follows. At 0830, Captain Alcorn, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command Newport, and Rear Admiral Velez, Director of Por Programs and Policies, U.S. Cyber Command, will arrive. The guests and class will, will rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and the invocation. The Commanding Officer and Guest of Honor will then address the graduating class and administer the oath of office. The graduates will then be recognized through the presentation of their commission by the commanding officer and the guest of honor. The guests will rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation. Yeah. Officer Training Command, Newport, arriving. Rear Admiral, United States Navy, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Everts will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, we give you our thanks for binding the restless waves within each of these newly trained naval officers so they could stand proud this day for becoming morally, mentally, and physically developed for the service of our fleet. As they prepare for their next evolution in their communities, remind them of what it means to be a leader and to serve with a purpose. Let them embody humility and selflessness. 
Remind them to value every sailor and civilian they cross paths with each day. Impress upon them the initiative, integrity, accountability, and toughness needed to do the right thing, especially when it's difficult. Embolden them to have ownership of what they are called to do when they are even, even when they are called into harm's way. So as these officers look to the horizon, prepare them for the challenges that lie ahead, giving them the physical, mental, and spiritual readiness to meet each one with confidence. And as we continue to celebrate this moment, we ask for your spirit to reside with us and all those who stand to watch this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Everett Alcorn, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command, Newport. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Velez, Captain Tate, Captain Berkey, Captain Grunwell, Captain Slentz, Colonel Kogan, Distinguished guests, veterans, service members, officer training command staff, family members and friends, and most importantly, the soon to be commissioned officers of OCS Class 17 TAC 23. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I'm excited to welcome 64 of our newest graduates into the one of the most challenging and fulfilling careers, that of Naval Officer. To the family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you did preparing these impressive young leaders prior to their arrival here. Your love, support, and encouragement have produced the remarkable individuals seated here. It has enabled them to make sound choices, and we are grateful to these graduates for their choice to serve. They could not have gotten to this point without the careful guidance and support of family and friends. On behalf of the Navy and a grateful nation, please accept my most sincere thank you. To the graduates here today, I am proud of each and every one of you. You all had many other options than volunteering to serve your country, yet you chose this path. I thank you for your patriotism and your willingness to serve. I assure you that a life of service holds many rewards and will bring great fulfillment. You've completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You've overcome obstacles. Nothing was given to you except opportunity, the opportunity to make something more of yourself, to learn, to grow and to lead. You seize that opportunity and today you reap its rewards. I congratulate each and every one of you for this significant and memorable achievement. It's now time to embrace an opportunity to lead what is truly the Navy's most precious resource, sailors in the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested often. You will be standing watch and working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world, around the clock. Know that you are doing significant and meaningful work for our country. Work hard, learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator, strive to be the best and give your country 100% effort. Nothing else will suffice. The nation and the Navy expect the best from you. The highest standards of personal and professional conduct, excellence in leadership, and a strict adherence to the Navy's core values, honor, courage, and commitment. I applaud your accomplishments and perseverance. You're about to embark on a great adventure, one in which I hope you find professional success and personal fulfillment. It will be unlike any other job you have ever had, and regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time in your life upon which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I wish you fair winds and following seas. It's now my privilege this morning to introduce you to our guest of honor, Rear Admiral Dennis Velez, Director of Plans and Policy at U.S. Cyber Command. He's a native of Ajuntes, Puerto Rico. 
He is a 1992 graduate of the Naval Academy, and he also has a degree from Toro University. At sea, he's completed tours aboard USS Stout, USS Carr, USS Gettysburg, and USS Donald Cook. He served on a float staffs with Commander U.S. Second Fleet aboard the USS Mount Whitney, LCC-20, and the, as a deputy commander for Desron 15 in Japan. He was the commanding officer of USS Fitzgerald and the USS San Jacinto. Ashore, he served as the officer in charge of the Western Hemisphere Group Caribbean Area Coordinator. At Naval Personnel Command, he served as a surface placement branchment head, the head of the Junior Surface Warfare Distribution, and as the captain, detailer, and deputy director for surface warfare distribution. He served at the Joint Staff, Strategic Plans and Policy Directorate, as the chief of the Northeast Asia Division, and assistant director for Political Military Affairs Asia. He was the senior military assistant to the 76th Secretary of the Navy. And as a flag officer, he served as commander for Navy Recruiting Command, and most recently as commander of Carrier Strike Group 10, George H.W. Bush Carrier Strike Group. Admiral Velez has been inducted into the Puerto Rico Military Hall of Fame in November of 21 and is a recipient of the Navy League's 2016 John Paul Jones Award for inspirational leadership. And today, a day that chief petty officers around the Navy are going to get pinned later, it is worth noting that he is an honorary chief petty officer. In February of this year, the president nominated him for a second star and appointment to the grade of Rear Admiral. His leadership is essential to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy, and we are privileged to have him with us here today to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Rear Admiral Dennis Velez. Good morning, I, uh, Everett, uh, again, got the acronym. Thank you for those kind remarks. Uh, you know, as I sit there and I listen to, uh, uh, to Everett read uh, all those things, it uh, just reminds me that uh, how fast time, time flies and how, how, how little time I got left in the Navy. So for all of you, it's going to be in a blink of an eye. If I can ask you all to just relax, smile, this is your day. So no more, uh, you don't have to be uh, locked up at attention there. So you, you can relax, all good. Uh, you made it. Uh, you're going to be instant here in a minute. Certainly, uh, it's great to see you all there, and it's really good to see the smiles now. It's uh, definitely uh, associated you with that uh, with joy. Uh, so, good morning, uh, Captain Alec and OTC staff, families, uh, OCS Class 1723. Uh, it is truly an honor to be here and provide some remarks on the occasion of your commission ceremony and graduation, marking the end of your uh, uh, officer candidate school time. 13 weeks, right? Was it long? Yeah? yeah. All right, all right. Uh, let me extend a special warm and welcome and a special thank you to uh, families and friends uh, that are here today. Uh, thank you for, uh, uh, for your love, for molding uh, these fine young men and women into patriots ready to serve our country. Uh, you have instilled in them the core values they will need to succeed as sailors uh, and certainly as lifelong community leaders. Uh, I also uh, I know that there's, a, there's a, a few retired folks in the staff. If you serve in the military, please stand up and let us recognize you for your service. If you're a retired, uh, if you're a veteran, anytime, any of the armed forces, Coast Guard, please stand up. Uh, let's give them a round of applause. It's good to see uh, Julie Grumble there. It's uh, good to see you. It's been a few years. Uh, among the values that uh, you help instill in these uh, young men and women are, are discipline, skill, passion, and commitment. When your son or daughter, sister, brother, or friend takes that oath today, you should feel proud of them. But should also be proud of yourselves because we in the Navy are very proud of what you do and what you do every day. Let me thank also the rising ensigns for your decision to serve our country. Soon you will be entrusted with the responsibility to lead sailors in the finest Navy ever seen. Captain Oker mentioned it is a great Navy day here in Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, not only, only graduating uh, 64 uh, you know, sailors here to become ensigns in the Navy, uh, we're also uh, pinning uh, a few chief petty officers that early today, so it's only a great day to be here in, the, in, in Newport. Newport has been a Navy town since 1881. Uh, it, has, it has been the place uh, where thousands of naval careers have been launched from. For my part, never in my wildest dreams I would have thought that when I was here in 1987 as an 18-year-old from Puerto Rico, that I will be speaking at a commission ceremony in this same place. I remember sitting here getting yelled out by Gunnery Sergeant Osborne. That, that name will never be erased from my memory. Great, great 
uh, senior NCO and certainly set me in the in the right path to uh, to accomplish my, my time here in Newport and the Naval Academy. While much have changed in the in terms of in terms of the buildings, the uh, there used to be some more buildings here. There used to be an obstacle course over there by the water. Uh, one thing has not changed, and that is the the great work that the senior NCOs, uh, the, the officers that are assigned to OTC and the school command here do every day. Uh, this is short duty for some, but I know it's not the real short duty. I know they work uh, long hours, probably uh, uh, 18 hour days, uh, seven days a week to make sure that these young men and women have the preparation needed uh, to, to be ready and face the challenges of fleet life. So if I could ask uh, all of you to uh, give the uh, senior NCOs and the staff here a round of applause. Make no mistake, the challenges that you will face are many, no matter what community you'll be joining, be PAO, aviation, surface warfare, submarines, supply, intel, cryptology, civil engineering, special warfare, or human resources. You will be challenged. From a recruiting crisis in our nation, to war in Europe, and back to great power competition with the rise in China, the challenges that you will face in your career will be many. You will be called upon to make hard decisions, to demonstrate leadership, and to think strategically. But above all, you will become part of something far greater than yourselves. The moment that you take your oath, you will become a link in that sacred chain of service. It is a chain that has protected this nation and unified our spirits in the early days of our republic. I took my oath 31 years ago, and it remains among the best decisions in my life. I could not imagine the challenges and opportunities that they will lay in front of me. From my earliest days in my earliest duty stations, I learned many tools, ones that I rely uh, on this, you know, to this day. I learned the importance of listening to my people, particularly my chiefs. Over the years, I also picked up a few key attributes that I saw in those great leaders I was lucky enough to serve with. For my first chief petty officer, little guy, 100 pounds from Milwaukee, Chief Pukasheski, GMC, Gunner's Mate, uh, to a bear of a man from uh, New Hampshire, Senior Chief uh, Steve, uh, Senior Chief Benjamin uh, Peter Lavalette, to later in my times to Mass Chief Fontaine or Mass Chief Morer in my later years. Too many and too many others to mention. You must do the same. Be humble, positive, and inquisitive. inquisitive. Always ready to learn and willing to listen. Give your people the opportunity and motivation to share their ideas and concerns. They'll let you know about problems and solutions long before you discover them for yourself. You must lead with empathy, look out for your people and their families, and always bloom where you're planted. Over the years, I've learned to pick up good things I saw in other leaders. I had the privilege to serve with and ignore the bad ones that I didn't like. I never really thought much about it. You know, just there, I, there were certain things that I would see good leaders do. Uh, then uh, last year, when I was in command of the Carrier Strike Group, former Secretary of the Navy uh, Dalton uh, came to visit the, sa the Strike Group, say, say hi to sailors and see ourselves in deployment. He spent the whole day, the, uh, Secretary Dalton is in the late 70s, still very active, uh, you know, just, a, just a great leader, uh, submarine officer, so he served in the Navy as a, uh, on submarines. Uh, and then uh, before he left, uh, he, he, he chatted with me for a few minutes on the, on the flight line as he was getting aboard the helicopter, and he handed me a little card, it's a little business card. In the front was his name, uh, uh, Secretary Dalton, uh, you know, 72nd Secretary of the Navy, I think it says. And in the back, it lists the seven key attributes of to, to great leaders that he's picked up over the years. Uh, that card still hangs. Uh, it's a, I put it on a little on a card, and it, it sits on my desk because it, it's a good reminder of what, what, what's important. Uh, but I added three more attributes to that list. And, and if you indulge me today, I'm going to read you the, those ten attributes, what they mean to me, and and why I think it's so important that you start thinking about uh, what are those uh, good things that, that you can pick up from, from good leaders and good people of service. So the first one is trusted. As a leader, you gotta earn the trust of your people, both up and down the chain of command. So work hard uh, to be trusted. Someone can look up to you and, and you know, hey, that's someone that I, can, that I can trust to do the hard things. How you do that, you do that by doing all the little things right. So make sure that you're trusted. Don't ever forget that. Take the initiative. When you get to your ship, your squadron, your, your, your office, wherever it is you're gonna work, uh, take the initiative. Don't wait for someone to tell you what to do, all right? Do it on your own. Ask questions. Look ahead. Think ahead. Use good judgment. You've, you've all 
successful individuals. You all went to college, you graduated, you were here because you competed for a slot in the United States Navy as a Naval officer. You were successful. Use that judgment uh, to continue to improve your time in the Navy. It speaks with authority. How do you do that? Well, you do that by learning, by studying, by be being the best one at everything that you do. Like the captain said, give it your 100% and you'll be able to speak with authority. Strengthen others. Take care of your people. Make sure that they're taken care of. That doesn't mean you let them go home at you know, 10 o'clock every morning. That means that you give them the right work, that you give them the right opportunity for them to advance, to feel that they accomplish a good day's work every day. Be optimistic, enthusiastic. I think that's the, you know, the number one role of an officer is to be optimistic. Uh, you're a leader, and the way you lead is by being optimistic, enthusiastic at everything that we do. Your sailors, the folks that work for you, will look up to you for cues. If you are moping around, you know, kind of ER every day, everything will be me, that's how your folks are going to be. But if you're optimistic, you're enthusiastic, they will be optimistic and enthusiastic too. So please do that every day. Never compromise absolutes. Whatever those things are for you, uh, there are a few in the Navy that you need to really understand. Uh, don't compromise on those things. It goes back to that trust. Never compromise on that. Your integrity, that's one thing that you should never compromise. No matter what, don't compromise that integrity. Lead by example. How do you lead by example? Doing the little things right. Following the rules. Enforcing the rules. Saying the standards. You know, that's what we get paid to do. As officers, we get paid to set the standard and to enforce the standard, so don't forget that. Be humble. You know, I'm a, I've been in the Navy 31 years, uh, still trying to act where I've in places and people stand up. Be humble, okay? Uh, treat everybody with dignity and respect. Treat everybody the way you wanna be, you wanna be treated. You do that and, you know, lots of doors will open. And the last thing that all Naval officers need to remember and all great leaders need to remember is that we serve our people. Okay? People don't serve us. We work for our people. So as long as you remember that, uh, if you do these things, I know that you will have a successful naval career, however long that is. You will, be, you will build teams with common vision and unity of purpose, just as you have done here at OTC. So you come from, you know, I looked at the, at the uh, uh, locations where you all uh, come from, it's pretty much every state. Uh, to include our uh, territories. There's a couple of overseas uh, uh, foreign countries that are listed as home of records. So you come from all over the place. But as of today, you're all naval officers. Remember that. As you embark on this adventure, you will, be, you will ha and have many great leaders to follow and many great examples to emulate. But you just don't follow their footsteps. Create your own journeys. Fulfill your destiny as the best and brightest the Navy and our nation needs. When I took my oath in 1992, the Cold War was just ending. Uh, the Soviet Union had just collapsed. Uh, Berlin Walls was a, a breach. Uh, and uh, we had the, uh, the honor of having uh, President uh, uh, George H.W. Bush as our, as our presiding officer for commissioning uh, down, down in Annapolis at the uh, Navy Marine Corps Stadium. Uh, and he told us uh, tells a story. He talked, he talked a lot about, about you know, what this moment meant, what the future is going to bring, uh, and about the risk uh, you know, that we were facing even though uh, that you know, our, our, our big enemy at the time, the Soviet Union, uh, uh, had collapsed. Uh, and for, no, for us not to forget uh, you know, how we got here and what, what, what was needed in the future, and that, that we needed to remain a strong Navy, a strong nation overseas to ensure that, uh, uh, you know, that the peace that had been you know, won by, by all those who served during the Cold War uh, remained for, for a long time. You also talked about, uh, you know, uh, a bit about, about the World War I, how uh, nations in the world kind of forgot about what it took to, uh, to, to, to win that war, uh, and that's why we ended up in World War II again. And then he, 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 he finished talking about, uh, you know, if John Paul Jones, the, you know, the, big, the big hero of our, of our uh, uh, early Navy days, uh, would have been here today, he would have talked about that uh, even to today, uh, to the measure of a ship is not the guns, but it's courageous men and women. And he said to all of us that your courage, your integrity, your ability to lead, these are the qualities uh, that, you know, which our nation's uh, security depends and, and needs today. So, you know, I was, I was a 22-year-old uh, young officer. You know, I was just about to graduate. I wasn't really paying attention to the president. So I went back, actually, the, uh, uh, in preparation for this day, uh, and I read what President Bush told us. So I, I just read that again for the first time last week, after 31 years. Uh, so I had no clue what he meant uh, back then as a 22-year-old uh, young man. 
but I think now after uh, having served 31 years, uh, you know, my days in the Navy are, are a lot less than all of you. I uh, think I know what he meant, and, and I'm going to try to give you my interpretation. This is uh, Dennis Valera's interpretation of, uh, of what he meant. I think that he felt uh, immense pride knowing that he was handing off a sacred legacy to the next generation of Navy leaders, because it's how I feel. People who stood where you were sent to, they have gone on to become admirals, leaders, battle-tested veterans. The legacy uh, you join includes national leaders, to include President Bush, who was an OCS grad, extraordinary members of the civilian community, and many others. Every one of them stepped up forward and took the same oath. Every one of them was, in some way or other, tested against that oath, as you will surely be as well tested. So remember to always live up to your commitment. Remember what brought you here and who brought you here, because that will determine everything about where you go from here. So in closing, I want to say congratulations to the OCS class 1723. I wish you fair winds, Halloween seas, and much success in everything that you do. Welcome to the force. Welcome to the fleet. Can't wait to see you in action. Thank you. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention. Class, raise your right hand. I say your name. I say your Having been appointed an ensign. Having been appointed an ensign. In the United States Navy. In the United States Navy. Do hereby accept such appointment. Do hereby accept such appointment. And do solemnly swear. And do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. That I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose, or purpose of evasion, and that I will fail, correction, that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office of which I am about to enter. So help me God. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The distinguished graduates assembled will now be recognized by the commanding officer and guest of honor for their achievements while undergoing training here at Officer Training Command, Newport. The Commander Jack Levitt Leadership Award is presented to the ensign chosen by the class for the peer who most inspired them and personifies the highest standards of personal example, sound management practice, and moral responsibility. This award is being presented to Ensign Seibel. Ensign Seibel has been designated as a Naval Intelligence Officer and has been assigned to Naval Intelligence School in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Seibel is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Seibel is also being presented with the Lieutenant Thomas Eady Honor Award for the Ensign who achieved the highest overall average in academics, military training, and physical fitness. Ensign Seibel is also being presented with the Chapel Clarity United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award. The Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce Academics Award is presented to the Ensign who achieved the highest academic average. This award is being presented to Ensign Martin. 
Ensign Martin has been designated as a Naval Intelligence Officer and has been assigned to Naval Intelligence School in Virginia Beach, Virginia. The Chapel Clarity United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Awards are presented to the ensigns who achieved the highest overall grade in physical fitness. This award is being presented to Ensign Lozano. Ensign Lozano has been designated as a Special Warfare Operator and has been assigned to Naval Special Warfare Group 1 in San Diego, California. Ensign Lozano is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Nyan is also being presented the Chapel Clarity United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award. Ensign Nyan has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to CG-67, the USS Shiloh, home ported in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Nyan is a distinguished Naval graduate. We will now recognize the remaining graduates. Ensign Adams has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-115, USS Rafael Peralta, home ported in Yokosuka, Japan. Ensign Archer has been designated as a Supply Officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Thompson has been designated as a Cryptologic Warfare Officer and has been assigned to Cryptologic Warfare Maritime Activity 6-1 in Fort Meade, Maryland. Ensign Hunter has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Grant has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Berkey has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-119 USS Delbert D. Black home ported in Mayport, Florida. Ensign Cherokola has been designated as a Naval Flight Officer and has been assigned to Naval Flight School at Naval Air Station in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Robertson has been designated as a Supply Officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Robertson is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Lambert has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-60. USS Paul Hamilton, home ported in San Diego, California. Ensign Wallace has been designated as a Civil Engineering Corps officer and has been assigned to Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 3 in Port Wyneme, California. Ensign Todden has been designated as a Nuclear Submarine Officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Zayun has been designated as a Supply Officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Arrow has been designated as a Nuclear Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-69, USS Milius, home ported in Yokosuka, Japan. Ensign Baez has been designated as a Civil Engineering Corps Officer and has been assigned to Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 1-1 in Gulfport, Mississippi. Ensign Batak has been designated as a Supply Officer and has been assigned to Naval Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Bosser has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LCS-27, USS Nantucket, home ported in Mayport, Florida. Ensign Bully has been designated as a Supply Officer and has been assigned to Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Bully is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. 
Ensign Butler has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Carrillo has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-62 USS Fitzgerald, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Chua has been designated as a civil engineering corps officer and has been assigned to Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 5 in Port Wyneme, California. Ensign Cintron Ruiz has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to cryptologic warfare activity 6-7 at National Security Agency Central Security Service in Fort Meade, Maryland. Ensign Kogan has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Cole has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-87 USS Mason, homeported in Mayport, Florida. Ensign Dick has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to Maritime Activity 6-1, Fort Meade, Maryland. Ensign Dominguez has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to Navy Information Operational Command in Kunia, Hawaii. Ensign Epling has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Esser has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Eugenio Guerrero has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LHA-7 USS Tripoli, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Field has been designated as a public affairs officer and has been assigned to Navy Public Affairs Support Element East in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Hendricks has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-71 USS Ross, homeported in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Jackson has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Jacobs has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Jaworski has been designated as a nuclear surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-119 USS Delbert D. Black, homeported in Mayport, Florida. Ensign Jenkins has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Kim has been designated as a Civil Engineering Corps officer and has been assigned to Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command Camp Butler in Okinawa, Japan. Ensign Kulakarni has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Lardner has been designated as a Civil Engineering Corps officer and has been assigned to Naval Support Facility Dahlgren in Dahlgren, Virginia. Ensign Lee has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Lee is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Lickers has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-105, USS Dewey, homeported in Yokosuka, Japan. Ensign Liu has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Marinas has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LHD-4 USS Boxer, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign McMunn has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Monroe has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-66 USS Gonzales, homeported in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Nguyen has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Patterson has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Perla has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LCS-18 USS Charleston, homeported in San Diego, California. 
Ensign Richardson has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LHD-7, USS Iwo Jima, homeported in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Salvatierra has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Sostian has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Stahl has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Thiel has been designated as a Civil Engineering Corps officer and has been assigned to Naval Facility Mid-Atlantic in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Ensign Tran has been designated as a Civil Engineering Corps officer and has been assigned to Marine Corps Air Ground in 29 Palms, California. Ensign Tuhachek has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Turner Jr. has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Twist has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Twist is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Valdivia has been designated as a Civil Engineering Corps officer and has been assigned to Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Ensign Vite has been designated as a Human Resources Officer and has been assigned to Transaction Service Center in Yokosuka, Japan. Ensign Wilson has been designated as a Public Affairs Officer and has been assigned to Navy Public Affairs Support Element West in San Diego, California. Ensign Woodbury has been designated as a Cryptologic Warfare Officer and has been assigned to National Security Agency Central Security Service in Fort Meade, Maryland. Ensign Slentz has been designated as a Civil Engineering Corps Officer and has been assigned to Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 3 in Port Wyneme, California. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest ensigns. Please rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now conclude the ceremony. Please remain in your places until after the graduating class has taken their photo. And remember, the only authorized visitor locations are K Hall and Nimitz PT Field. On behalf of the commanding officer, Thank you for attending today's ceremony. <laughs>